Hi guys, my name's Jordan, and in this Ant Room tour, we're looking at some new additions to our ever-growing collection of ants. They are the incredibly unique and highly specialized trap joy ants. Housed within this founding nest, we have a colony of trapjaws of the genus Odontomachus, sent to us by one of our viewers over in Western Australia. The colony is only in its early stages, with just three workers present, all the offspring of their mother and queen. As you can see, she looks quite similar to her children. You can tell her apart by her slightly larger frame. And if you look closely, you can see some distinctive marks on either side of her thorax. This is where her wings were once attached. Wings which she used for nuptial flights. Often once queens begin founding their colony, they shed these wings, like this one has, leaving behind a couple of small and dimply scars. These guys are quite large ants, measuring in at around 15 to 20 millimeters in length but their size isn't really what they're known for. As their common name of trapjaw ants suggests, they're renowned for their highly sophisticated and deadly mandibles. To showcase this, I'm placing a small cricket into their foraging arena. One of our new Ants Australia Outworlds. The ants sense the cricket's presence almost immediately, opening up their mandibles wide in response. They fix them into position at around 180 degrees, and at this point, they're poised to strike. A couple of the workers curiously make their way up to the nest entrance, but that's about as far as they go. These ants are primarily solitary hunters, often preferring to prey upon small insects, like termites. So perhaps they're a little intimidated by the size of this cricket here. Eventually, however, the ants had no choice but to take it on, as the cricket ended up coming to them, blundering into their nest. Definitely not a good place to be. Using their antennae, the trapjaws carefully size up their unwanted guest and calculate the best point to strike. Then once these sensory hairs lined along the insides of their mandibles touch their target, it triggers the ants to snap their jaws shut at blinding speeds. You're witnessing the fastest bite in the entire animal kingdom. The action is so fast that it can generate forces exceeding 300 times the ant's body weight. That's some serious power. Well more than enough to encourage this cricket into a swift retreat. With their prey now stunned and disorientated, the ants have finally built up enough courage to go on to the offensive. Did you see that? This ant just sliced straight through the cricket's antennae. The sheer speed at which they strike is truly astonishing. Not only do trapdoors possess this lethal bite, but they also have a venomous stinger, which they can unsheath from the tips of their abdomens. Upon injection, it causes their victims to go into a state of paralysis. Although, in the case of this cricket here, it appears their bites alone were more than sufficient enough to subdue it. So perhaps they didn't feel the need to expend valuable energy by following up their bites with a sting or two. On top of trapjaw ants' impressive offensive capabilities, they're also quite well equipped for defense, but not in a way that you would expect. They have a unique ability to fling themselves out of harm's way. They do this by turning their jaws into a catapult. When faced with a perceived danger, they point their heads towards a solid surface and unleash the power of their bite. The generated force is then used to propel the ants backwards. Just watch how fast the action is. It's almost like they're teleporting themselves. 
It definitely wouldn't be easy to pursue something that could flee in a split second like this. It's such a quirky, but highly successful strategy of survival. In terms of diet, I've tried feeding these ants sugars, like this slice of pear here, and also some small drops of raw honey. But they don't seem to be very interested, and rarely leave their nest to try it in the first place. Generally, young ant colonies, with only a few workers present, tend to be quite timid when it comes to foraging. With this colony for example, I've never seen more than a single worker at a given time out exploring their foraging area. Perhaps it's because they feel as though they have much more to lose. If just one worker were to become lost, injured or die whilst in search of food, that's one third of the worker's population just gone. So to make the ants feel more at ease when it comes to feeding, I like to place food right by their nest entrance. Despite this, I found these trapdoors still reject most foods that I provide. Unless they're insects. Crickets seem to be their favourite. As soon as I place one near their entrance, they drag it straight down into the safety of their nest. Because their jaws are so large in respect to their bodies, they tend to get in the way from time to time, inhibiting their movement. So when consuming food, like this cricket here, I find that they'll often fully open their jaws, so as to allow their mouth parts better access to it. So when a trapjaw ant opens its jaws, it's not always a sign of aggression. Now onto our second colony of trapjaws. These guys are of a different, but closely related genus, known as Anachetus. A genus mostly found in tropical areas. These guys here were found in Queensland by our good mate Riley over at Aussie Ants. Queensland is a hot spot for ant diversity, and so here they keep and document a vast variety of species. I highly recommend checking them out over on their YouTube channel and Instagram page. I'll leave the links in the description below. Currently the colony has several workers present, and I've got them housed in a simple test tube setup which is just a water reservoir blocked off with some cotton wool. Here you can see the queen of the colony, distinctively darker in colour than the workers, and like most queens, a little larger in size too. Compared to the Odontomachus trapjaws, this species is super tiny, only around 3 to 4 millimetres in length. Side by side, you can see the difference is quite substantial. Because of these ants' smaller size and slightly different jaw structure, they aren't as deadly as their sister genus. They act more like ambush predators, rather than taking their prey head on. Despite their small frames, I think they still look quite intimidating. The way that they're moving around their tube here kind of resembles a pacing lion. It almost looks like they're moving in slow motion. Just like the Odontomachus, they're also a little picky when it comes to food, preferring small insects over anything else. Here I'm feeding them a tiny cockroach, which they seem to be quite fond of. Watch as one of the workers methodically opens up her jaws to maneuver herself into a better position. And here you can see one of the workers carefully tending to their brood. A tiny larva, only about a millimetre in length. So it's clear that these trap jaws aren't at all hindered by their menacing jaws, effectively utilising them for even the most delicate of tasks. So what do you guys think of trap jaw ants? Pretty impressive, right? I find it remarkable how they've evolved such incredible predatory weaponry that's often utilised for a profoundly different function. Flight. This is a great example of evolutionary co-option, where a trait evolved for one purpose serves another. 
So which ants do you guys want to see next time in our Aaron tour? Currently we're keeping over 50 unique species, including Dracula ants, strobe ants, sugar ants, meat ants, spiny ants, bull ants, big headed ants, furnace ants, and so much more. So let us know in the comment section below. Now onto our regular contest, where we give away one of our specially built formicaria. In last video's contest, we asked, what is the most disturbing thing that you've discovered about ants? For me, it's when I first learned of parasitic queens, queen ants which found their colonies by brutal means. After their nuptial flights, instead of digging out a little burrow, laying some eggs, and starting a colony from scratch, like most queens do, what they do is infiltrate and usurp existing colonies by killing their queen and disguising themselves as the colony's true queen by rubbing the murdered queen's pheromones all over their bodies. That's quite disturbing to me. So the winner of the contest is... DW Deer1985, who found their most disturbing ant discovery to be about Dracula ants, also known as vampire ants. These guys get their name for a reason. They have a rather creepy tendency to bite their own developing larvae and consume their hemoglobin, much like a vampire would. So congratulations, you've just won yourself one of our size 1 acrylic nests. For our next video's contest, we're going to be giving away one of our size 1 Waitong nests. To enter, simply answer the following. How has your interest in ants impacted you as a person? For example, you might have become more interested in the natural world or have managed to meet new people and make new friends that you otherwise wouldn't have met. Or perhaps it's kept you distracted from some unpleasant experiences in your life. A little bit of a personal question I know, but we'd love to hear your honest thoughts. So post your answer in the comment section below. We'll pick out a single comment and announce them as the winner in our next video. As always, thanks for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed.